What's up guys, Ross here, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna be talking about EQ pedals and the different ways that you can use them to enhance your tone and increase the efficiency of your setup. And we'll come to what I mean by that later on. But my hope with this video is that it answers questions you may have about you know, the topic of EQ pedals if you've never used an EQ pedal before in your life. Uh, you know, are they really necessary? Why would I need an EQ pedal when I can just adjust the bass, middle and treble on my amps control panel or on my pedals? You know, questions that I myself wondered before I ever tried out an EQ pedal in my own setup. I have to thank Walrus Audio Effects for sponsoring today's video. They sent me their EB10 EQ boost and utility pedal uh, for use in today's video and I'm also being paid to make it. So just so we're all on the same page moving forward. And I want to make it clear to you all that I have never been paid to say anything positive about any product that has been sent uh, for use on my channel because I am very selective about the brands that I choose to work with and I just don't have the time nor the energy to make videos about products that suck. So with that out of the way, let's now get into the first use of an EQ pedal and this is perhaps the most obvious one. It's to fine tune your tone. Here's a nice high gain preset that I have created on my Axe FX2. It's a dual amp and cab setup and I'm running the EB10 directly into the front of the Axe FX, but what you're about to hear is the pedal bypassed. So this is just the normal preset on its own. Now that preset already sounds great to my ears. I don't really want to do anything to it right now, but Let's say I'm on tour and night after night, I'm in a different venue. I'm plugging my Axe FX into uh, different PA setups. I'm using different stage monitors every night. Maybe some nights I'm using in-ears. For each of those situations, I might feel the need to um, alter my frequencies, to adjust my frequencies uh, so that I'm happy with my tone night after night. Having an EQ pedal on my pedal board for this purpose makes it incredibly easy to do that, right? I don't have to go to my Axe FX or my Kemper or my Helix, whatever modeler it is I'm using, I don't have to go to that and navigate through menus to adjust the bass, middle and treble on the amp or the high cut on the speaker cabinet or um, the tone on the drive pedals that I'm running on the preset. I can just kneel down to my pedal board and adjust the frequencies from there. It's as simple as that. don't have to ask the sound engineer every time I want a slight adjustment to be made, I can just take full control from my pedal board. And this would be especially useful in larger scale touring scenarios where, uh, you know, maybe you're playing in arenas and your stage setup is pretty minimal. So maybe your amps, cabs and modelers, whatever it is you're using, all that stuff is behind the scenes. It's off stage and all you have on stage is your guitars and your pedal board in front of you. So there's no quick access to your amps or your modelers, but you do have instant access to your EQ pedal that's on your board. And for those of you gigging in smaller venues where you do have instant access to your amp, it's right behind you or it's right beside you. Um, if you're wondering, why can't I just adjust the bass, middle and treble 
on the amp. Well, you can do that, but it doesn't sound the same as adjusting the low, mid, and high frequencies on an EQ pedal. Here's an example of a clean dumbbell based preset with the bass, middle and treble all set at noon. Now I'm going to turn the treble all the way up and take a listen to what this does to my tone. Now I'll return the treble to noon and instead boost the highs on the EB10. I hope you can hear the clear difference there. You know, boosting the highs on the EQ pedal sounds remarkably different to just turning the treble up on your amp. Um, think of your amp settings as like your core tone. You know, you wanna dial that in uh, without an EQ pedal engaged as best as you possibly can. Ideally, your amp is gonna sound so good that you won't want to use an EQ pedal with it. You won't feel the need to rather but sometimes you'll gig in a new venue and your amp with its usual settings, it just won't sound the way you expected it to. It'll sound different because you're in a different environment. That's when you bring in the EQ pedal to boost or cut the low, mid and high frequencies in ways that your amp cannot. Let's move on to the second use of an EQ pedal and that is as a solo boost that's not harsh on the ears. Oftentimes when I have a nice rhythm crunch tone and I want more volume for a solo, simply boosting the level of that same rhythm crunch tone isn't gonna do it for me. And that's because the high frequencies of that tone when boosted to a higher level are often just, just too sharp. It's like they're slicing into your eardrums and it's just uh, very unpleasant to listen to um, as a player and as an audience member, especially when you're playing on the higher strings and high up the fretboard. So that's where using an EQ pedal as a boost pedal comes in handy. You can cut those high frequencies when boosting the level so that you get the volume you want for your solo, but without hurting everyone's ears. I will often slightly cut the lows, boost the mids and cut the high frequencies when I'm going for a solo to get a nice bold lead tone which might sound like this. <laughs>
Now you probably noticed the boost switch on the EB10 and thought, why is that not foot switchable? Well, it actually is in a way. See, the EB10 allows you to save and switch between three different presets. And you can run the pedal in two different modes, live and preset mode. Um, when you're in live mode, that allows you to just simply bypass and engage the pedal um, as you would with any other stomp box. When you switch to preset mode, which you can do easily by just holding down the bypass switch for three seconds, when you switch to that mode, the pedal is constantly engaged. And so when you tap the bypass switch in preset mode, that is switching between three of the onboard preset slots that you can save to. This is how you can activate that boost switch without having to kneel down to your pedal board. To save a preset, adjust the controls to your taste and engage the boost switch if you want a volume boost. Then hold the bypass switch for one second, the lights will flash and your preset is now saved with the boost engaged. So even if you switch to another preset and disengage the boost, it will still be active on the preset that you saved with it engaged. The ability to save and switch between different presets using the EB10 is a feature that's gonna be particularly useful to those of you who are out gigging with two electrics on one gig. So let's say I'm out on a gig and I've taken my D'Angelico Premier DC, which has humbuckers, and my Strat, which obviously has single coils. I might use the D'Angelico for 90% of the set, but then break out the Strat for a song or two. If I do this, I'm probably gonna dial in my amp and my drive pedals to suit the tone of my D'Angelico since it's what I'll be using most. But it's likely that when I plug the Strat in, the tone isn't gonna be as thick as it was with the humbucker equipped guitar. And because it's using single coils, the highs are probably gonna just be too bright. So what I would do in that case is I would create a preset on the EB10 specifically for use with the Strat that's gonna thicken up the tone and tame the high end so that it's not too harsh and not too bright. And that way I get a nice Strat tone, but one that is consistent with that of the D'Angelico and prevents the sound engineer from feeling the need to step in and adjust EQ on the desk. So here's some side-by-side -side comparisons to show you what that would sound like. <laughs> There you have it guys, three ways to use an EQ pedal to your advantage. Of course there are more things you can do 
uh, with EQ pedals than just those three, but uh, those are the things that I would most likely use one for in a setup of my own. Thank you to Walrus Audio Effects for sponsoring today's video and sending me their EB10 EQ Boost and Utility pedal. Uh, this is a very unique looking EQ pedal, let's face it, you don't see a lot of pedals, a lot of EQ pedals that look like this. Um, I love that it has that preset feature that's super useful and it's a very smart move on their part to include that. So yeah, thank you again to Walrus Audio. Thank you guys for watching the video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and if you learned something from it and you feel like another guitar player might benefit from watching it, then feel free to like the video so that it gets spread out to more guitar players and you know maybe share it with a guitar player that's looking to get a new EQ pedal. Uh, click subscribe and the notifications bell to never miss another video from me in the future. And that about does it. Hope you're all well, hope you're all safe, and I'll see you in the next one.